Hey everybody, uh, this is Sex, Drugs, and Opera. My name is Jared Ice. Michael Pegger here. We decided to do a do something special today. We're doing a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Different from what we usually do, which Different is podcast. Which is podcast. Uh, we we decided to introduce ourselves on this one. I guess is the new thing. This well, is, that's the old thing. Yeah, that's true. That's what we used to that's do. That's true, man. That's Throwing true. It all the way back. But these days, you don't. Okay, this is your podcast for February 29th, twenty twenty. How you doing? How you doing? Um, <laughs> Yeah, the old days, man, you used to have to introduce yourself, you know, on the phone and shit. And these days, it's uh, different the with phone. the caller ID. Absolutely. In life, in life, man. I, I love calling old people who don't know. Yeah. Or I love when old people call you from, like, a landline. Yeah. And you're like, hi, Aunt Cindy. And you're like, how'd you know? <laughs> They're so, de- I mean, it's it's really, really crazy what a person who is 80 years old right. went through. Yeah, okay, like, man... <laughs> <clears throat> if you're 80 years old, yeah, that means you went from a time where most people had furniture that was specifically designed <clears throat> to hold a phone and have like a little fucking place for the phone book yeah. and like a seat on there. Like it was rare to make a phone call. To having the entirety of human knowledge at your fingertips every single second. That is a huge fucking jump. Yeah, I mean, and even in our lives, and like like for you and I in our mid thirties, it's like uh, we saw so much technology happen, but we always grew up with it. But could you imagine being like forty years old and technology kind of didn't change that much, and then all of a sudden exploded? Yeah, there's no way you'd be able to keep up. Like you got like a life and shit. Like how the fuck are you gonna keep up with all those changes? There were people who in the fifties, yeah, they're like, ah, oh, the moon. Mm. And then it was like 20 years later, the fucking moon. Yeah. They're on the moon. Dominated the moon, man. They're on the fucking moon. On the fucking moon. Unless they faked it like a lot of people say. But like how... how, They didn't fucking fake it. But these conspiracy theories, there's so many conspiracy theories out there. Like, like, didn't the Russians have really good telescopes and couldn't they... Can't can't you like... Can you not see the flag on the moon? I mean, you know more than I can. No, you can't. You can't see... Why? It's on the other side. No, it's just we don't. It, you don't have the resolution to see a flag on the moon. The Hubble t- t- telescope. You can't point that. That's not what the H- Hubble telescope is for. All right, man. That's okay. not what it's for. So you that's can't... not what it's meant for. The Hubble telescope is meant for, like, they have this thing called the Hubble Deep Field. Have you okay. ever seen that? No. So, it was a spot like that. Look, that was completely empty. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like it was just a dark patch of sky. They said, mm-hmm. "What would happen if we just pointed the Hubble there?" And left the lens open for ten days, mm-hmm. and when they opened it, uh, and when they got the image, in this black, completely black area of sky where there was nothing, yeah, there were over ten thousand galaxies just in the one image at a completely black mm-hmm. part of sky, dude. Man, that's fucking crazy. That's what the Hubble's for. N- that I mean, the Hubble's not for like Hubble looking down at you and like checking out what you're grilling on Sunday. You I know, that's, that's what not for. what the fuck it's for. I'll tell you a really cool thing though. <clears throat> One of the instruments they put on the moon was, uh, it's like a mirror, right? Yeah, okay. Now, <clears throat> have you ever been like, have you ever seen like where there's uh, like maybe at the gym or something like that where they'll have a wall and it's completely a uh, mirror, yes. and then there are mirrors on each side also at like a ninety degree, yes. right? Yeah. And if you ever look there, mm. you like you'll go you'll move back and forth. Yeah. And you'll never be able to like see your face in that corner, mm. right? Because the way the light comes in mm. is it always reflects exactly back to the exact spot it was shown from, right? So okay. if the and that's not like a normal mirror, like when you look in the mirror, if you look at an angle, somebody like let's say somebody's behind you and you mm. can see them, that goes in an angle. It goes uh, off of their face, bounces off the mirror, and goes into your eyes, right? Yeah. But when it's in the corner like this, mm-hmm. what happens is that the light instead of um, instead of shining back at at at, at a different angle, yeah. What happens is it shines back at the exact it shines back exactly to the point that uh it came from so you'll never see your face in that in that uh in that corner okay because it's shining it like it, you'll see yeah we, we get it'll shine in there and then shine yes, right back. Yes, yes. Okay. the reason i'm telling you this is because yeah. if you take a like a tiny like a bunch of tiny ones of that mm-hmm. right and make like a panel of them okay what you could theoretically do, and they actually practically do, they put like a big panel of that up on the fucking moon, mm-hmm. and you can shine a laser. 
You can shine a fucking laser from the Earth onto that thing, and it'll bounce back exactly. And because of that, they can tell down to, like, the fucking centimeter how far away the moon is because the laser is traveling at the speed of light, comes back. All you need to know is exactly how long it took to get back, to reflect back to you, and they can tell exactly how far away the moon is. It's Thank God, man. Crazy, I, don't, I don't want that moon fucking sneaking away, man. <laughs> you know? You can't it is, trust dude. the moon. It's snaking. Do you think it's really made of cheese, or do you think that's also a myth? <clears throat> be kind of sweet right just a little cheesy moon if i were the i was the evil evil genius i'd just throw a bunch of uh, i'd do a rocket full of uh mice up there to get rid of the moon mike and i just ate the uh, most expensive asian food we've ever had in our life jesus christ dude we're gonna take them down on google we just ate it, it was it was fucking train station asian food and uh we paid like it was like 20 euros a plate for that shit yeah what is that i don't know it was it was i mean train station a- uh, asian food chinese yeah. food is good but it's, it's good. But for three bucks. But for three bucks, it's good, right? Not 20, man. Not 20. No, no, no. Mike came in here. I was playing the Fantastics. You know that musical? I do not. That, you know the song, But though, the right? Try to Remember, right? Yeah. Yeah, I know that song. Okay, Try to Remember. From, it's like most of you that, that studied singing, it's like uh, you probably sang this or heard someone sing this in, in your studio class, right? Um, <clears throat> and music, I, I hadn't. I was just jamming on that because I was waiting for Mike to get here. And music is really strongly linked to memories. You know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. I had forgotten something. But as soon as I played that, I remembered it. I was in New York years ago, and uh, someone was like, "Do you want to see a musical?" There's like an off, off, off Broadway musical. They're doing the Fantastics. Like, let's check it out. Right. So I go, and it's like a thirty-person seat theater, and like. Uh, I don't know, whatever. I'm just like, outside waiting to go in. And it was super casual. There was like no backstage area. So the actors were just walking in past you. And this little fucking blonde kid like bumps into me coming out of the bathroom. He's like, sorry, bro. I was like, that kid is not fucking dressed to watch a musical, right? Right. And he ended up being in the show. And it was fucking Aaron Carter. Do you remember Aaron Carter, dude? No. Aaron Carter was a pop star in like the early 2000s. His brother was uh, in the Backstreet Boys. Okay. I can't remember. Like, like. Something Carter, his brother, but they had a fucking reality show, like where his like older brother would like fucking slap him around and shit like that. Are you surprised that I don't know this? No, but it's just like this guy. He used to be a star. He used to be like Justin Bieber level famous for a short time, right? Aaron Carter, like everyone knew who he was, and uh, within like a year, because I because it wasn't that long after he was like pretty fucking famous, he was singing this off 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 Broadway musical version of the Fantastics, which was basically like a wooden crate. With like a red fucking towel on it, and like no costumes. How the mighty fall! How the mighty fall! Would you keep doing it? Would you? I mean, like, would you? Because I get doing the community theater if you're working your way up, but like, how far if you've been famous, right? If you're like, let's let's translate it to opera, right? If you're Jonas Kaufman famous, okay, and then like you just fall off and you're not famous anymore, how far down do you go? Do you go back down to like the community stuff? I think I'd rather be than or would you just, just be done? noticed. Doing my doing my grocery bagger job, you know. You would hey, rather are you ha- Aaron Carter? Yeah, that was me. Here are your groceries, oh, right? The noise is here. That's what that's what I would do rather than rather than because people who are going to those off off Broadway things are still mostly educated people and they get to see. Yeah, they get to know what's going on. You know, well, it's because it's weird in the opera world. Because in the opera world, if you're famous, like yeah, there's some people that like you know like aren't the best singers in the world that are getting a lot of work and shit like that. But for the most part, you're a legit fucking singer. If you're, you famous. know what I mean. Yeah. And so some people they phase out because they get too old or something like that. But if you still got it in opera, since there's like this standard to it, you can disappear the same way in pop music, where like being famous is mostly just about like kind of luck. And uh, who you know? Yeah, totally. You know what I mean? So like this, like, did you ever watch like MTV, like behind the music, like where you got these famous fucking people, and then they just fall off, and they're like not fucking. I think the only one I saw was MC Hammer. MC Hammer. Dude. I don't know why I'm laughing, dude. It's just that, too that legit guy. to quit, dude. Too legit to quit. But you know what I mean? Because it's like being being fucking famous and shit. Like being known for that stuff is not so much about like meeting a standard. It's just like some sort of like amassment of variables happened that allowed you to be famous. And then if like the marketing balance is off, you're just fucking gone. Especially, Even if you still got the talent, people won't listen like to you. Especially like something like a boy band, because a boy band, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Is almost purely. The creation of a studio. Yeah, they yeah. go through auditions of hundreds of people, and they know before those kids get there what their hair is going to look like, uh-huh. what they're doing, what what songs they're going to be singing, what the cor- choreography is going to be. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's a marketing thing. Yeah, yeah. Those boy bands are straight marketing. But if you have somebody like, I don't know, like I I mentioned him on the podcast before, Martin Sexton, okay. like a genuinely good 
creative person, mm. that's that's different. You become you become well known, and you kind of stay. Your career goes because you're good. But that, that's what I mean. Like like you like I in uh, in the Seattle area, there's lots of casinos, and you see these casino tours where it's like you got these people who are like really fucking big in the '70s and '80s, and then you start doing the casino circuit and stuff like that. But like if you're good, you'll still fucking work. But uh, in the opera world, it's like I don't know. You either you either stop, but you don't really once you once you're like singing like 20 shows at the Met. Are any of those people going back to doing like community theater? Not no, lower level not, stuff. Not they dip that. down to B A B A houses. I've seen that a lot, but I've never seen someone like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, like yeah, yeah. it's like a king's robe that's like three sizes too big, and it's like tonight we have fucking like <laughs> Bilat Son singing the role of like whatever, you know? Oh, I mean, there on. was that one. There was that one tenor. Yeah. Really good. He was supposed to be like one of the tenors okay. of his time. Mm. Aragal or something. Uh, Aragal or mm. something. Aragorn. I mean, no, Aragorn. Okay. Right, exactly. <laughs> no, uh, he was he was great, a great singer, but for some reason never, yeah. never made that that fucking thing. Yeah, you yeah. know. I just mean like being famous, but whatever. I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you, dude. I'm a. I got an addiction. I got I got to put out there, so maybe I can get cured of it. Okay. I'm addicted to Forrest Gumping, dude. It's my thing. What the fuck is Forrest Gumping? I think I, I I think a lot of people suffer from this, but they just haven't, they haven't had a name to band together as a group, and I'm giving it a fucking name, okay? Oh, sweet. <laughs> and you're gonna know what I'm talking about when I tell you about this. But Mike, when we go out drinking sometimes, and it's like late, and I got there's a bar Mike and I go to all the time. We've talked about it before. But when I walk home, it's always a 20, 25 minute walk home. Oh, and you run. I run. Drunk, drunk. I just when I'm drunk, yeah, yeah. I run, and I don't know why. And you and you have all this energy, and you don't yes, get tired. And I can't stop. And I'm just like I was running, and I just I was <laughs> running <laughs> the fucking my magic shoes, and I just <laughs> run home, dude. And, I, and it's gotten really bad. Where every time we drink, I just sprint home. It's, I did that in college. What I, is that? What I, is it about drinking that makes you just want to fucking run like I the wind, know. man? I don't know. But is anyone one, else out there Forrest Gump and please write it? Okay? I Forrest Gumped exactly. No, okay, I can't say exactly, but there was one time that I remember clear as a bell. Okay, right. I ran, 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 and I then laid down on somebody's lawn. Yeah, but it wasn't necessarily because I was so tired. It was like. This looks like a nice fucking lawn to lie down yeah, on, Yeah, right? but you do that sometimes. And I came, and I the guy came out. He's like, "Are you okay?" And I'm like, "Oh yeah, just, just oh, taking I'm a fine. rest. <laughs> I'm okay, no problem." <laughs> can I, I? I'm like, "Can I lay here?" He's like, "Yeah, take your time." Yeah, you did that I'm after not my Fourth of bit. July party. You like you like took a nap on the way home or something like that. Did I? Yeah, yeah. We had this Fourth of July party. We had this belly flop contest and stuff, and it was like one of these. Oh, we yeah. were drinking for 14 yeah. hours. <laughs> you somehow were like just sleeping on someone's grass on the way home. I remember that. That's oh something God, you do. That's two times. Except this one, this one time I ran there. Yeah, yeah. I ran there. Forrest Gump has got to be one of the most quotable movies ever, though. Maybe. Yeah. I think I could beat anybody quote for quote for Forrest Gump. Okay. Yeah. You want to go sometime? You name the top of the place. I guess we could go right now. Give me one. So wait. Uh, so I say one. Say and a you've quote for Forrest Gump, and you got you have three seconds to say the next quote. Okay. Um. You're already gonna lose. I can tell. Uh, but you ain't got no legs, Lieutenant Dan. Jenny, why don't you love me? <laughs> uh, uh, um, Mama said life is like a box of chocolates. You never know what oh, you're gonna on, get. I know. Good, I'm just going. Good. Seats taken. Right. <laughs> Wait, I've got the next one for you. Okay. Taken. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Go on. Sometimes there just aren't enough rocks. <laughs> How about this? <laughs> you can sit here if you want. <laughs> if you want to. I think. Oh, I can't I can't do any more. No, right. go, come on. Oh God. Uh oh man. Uh Bubba Gump's gotta have some good ones. Yeah, definitely. I'm out. You won. You <laughs> I won. can't believe it. I, I know. I, I talked to I, I talked to him. No, no, no. But you gave yourself too little time. Three seconds is fast. I just well, cause you get stuck on something like Bubba Gump, he's like naming all the different types of shrimp. Magic shoes. You didn't say that. And but I just ran. You know, I could have done that one, I guess. <laughs> and no, no, she said it. And so you, the old lady on the bench. So you just ran, <laughs> right? I can see her face, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I saw a meme that kind of ruined that movie. What? First off, the movie has that whole, like, I like the movie. Don't get me wrong. One of the best movies ever. Great soundtrack. I know. I'm just saying. I know. I'm just, I'm just throwing up. Soundtrack. Yeah, yeah. Great soundtrack. That feather. Come on. 
No, I know, but the whole nineties like yeah they love those 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 like lilting flute melodies like jurassic park and forrest gump and they love that shit and normally spielberg yeah. has to have some like overly corny moment yeah yeah right yeah, yeah sure uh what else was i gonna say about that the forrest gump? And that's all i gotta say <laughs> about that did you play you played violin but did you play violin in school or did you No, was, we okay. didn't have an orchestra program we had i uh, had okay i had like a class of a thousand kids i see it was a huge school, but... No orchestra. No orchestra. They only came up with an orchestra program after. Anyone who came up through the band program, like I did in the 90s, they had these essential elements books. Do you know about those at all? Like, talking about the elements. Yeah, it was about, like, like, uh, like, I, like, like I was going to make a joke, but I can't name Like the elements, elements, like No, nitrogen. no, fuck you. It's like, it's like these books you do. So in fifth grade, it's your first year, so your essential elements one. It's like... Ooh, that sounds somehow familiar. It's like a green book or something like that. And so it like has like basic, basic rhythm and maybe three different notes. And then there's like essential elements, two, three, four. And it's like a red book. A blue. I'm blowing mine. Someone out there forgot about this shit and you're remembering no, it now. I'm thinking that's happening to and me And then now. like the black one was like, I had like turkey in the straw. And you were like, skidabapapap, skidabapapap, skidabapapap. Oh, there's someone. You know, doing that shit. But then there was a, there was not a Forrest Gump one, but there was like a like Hollywood one. And it had like Forrest Gump. Lion King, like Jurassic Park, and I, I remember I, I used to play that shit on my tuba until my mom wanted to fucking strangle me. I'd just be in there fucking scuba, scoop, scoop, scap, scoop, squap, 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 just because they had it transposed for every instrument, you know. <laughs> Jurassic Park, scoot a doop, scoot a doop. <laughs> Good shit, dude. I got oh, the tuba. That's fucking ridiculous. <laughs> I don't know why I played the tuba. I had this obsession with playing instruments because I'll tell you why. Um, I played trumpet it was the first instrument I played and I practiced really fucking hard and none of those other fucks practiced and I carried the trumpet section and I got to my first orchestra concert and I was like yes I practiced so hard it's time to show it and I couldn't wait till I got home I had my dad play the recording immediately and the trumpet section was just like ah, ah, and you couldn't hear my shit and I had worked so hard I was like fuck it man so I switched immediately to the tuba because every time you hear the tuba it's like at, at least I'm holding it down right. fuck you all man <laughs> Fuck you all with your shit, dude. But the tuba is not cool, man. It's not a cool fucking instrument. I tell That's you that much. fine. It's cool. No. No. Tuba's, tuba tuba, is really good. If you don't know anything about tuba, go look on YouTube and look at like some of the best tuba players in the world playing tuba solos. It's it's incredible how beautiful and high and fast. It's an incredible well, instrument. is there a cool or- orchestral instrument? Like, cool. For real, cool. Well, let's talk about it. Okay, Marlon for- Brando... Stella, cool. Coolest orchestra instruments, definitely violin. Now it's also not cool. You're getting your ass kicked if you play the violin in school. I mean, dude. All, all the cool, quote unquote, cool kids were like playing percussion, like with that fucking snare drum on their back. Right, okay. Like walking around with that, like drums, like I'm a drummer. If you are somebody cool in the marching band, you're the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. What was that movie called? The fucking drumline? Drumline, drumline. Um, <clears throat> jazz band, you could be cool because then you had a guitar. I played like electric bass in the jazz band. Think about it. And so you, you in could be kind of high school. Cool. Yeah. In the pecking order of high school. Yeah. If you were in any kind of band, any kind of kind of choir, yeah. are you cool? It didn't make you cool. You could be cool and be in the band, but being in the band didn't make you cool. Right. Exactly. Because what cool is? I mean, like, if you want to talk about like what fucking cool is, it's not. It's not what you as an individual think, and it's not what you can prove. It's what the masses think. Yeah, you know what unfortunately. I mean? That's that's what cool means. Like that Dude, word. Do you know what that means? What? That means that fucking opera is not cool. The uh, most of the masses aren't finding opera cool. Yes. Right. Okay. I would agree with that. Okay. I would agree with that. You know, that's a hard one to take though because everybody's putting it out there. Well, because people people just use words without thinking about like what they actually mean. I want to talk about that, but it's like the word cool, for instance, itself is interesting. It's yeah. been around. Have you seen that before? Like, it's like the word cool came about like in the 40s and other words come and go. Like when I was young, things were tight. It was fucking filthy. That's filthy, bro. Cool's been you know? around forever, cool, though, dude. Cool came into like play. Like you can Google like how words come in and out of trend. Yeah. Cool came into fashion and fucking stayed. Everybody's still saying cool. And if it's not too of much of a mind fuck to talk about, the word cool is cool because everybody germans you come over here cool you go to japan they say cool everyone in the fucking word knows the word cool and that's why the word cool itself is fuck cool all right i mean how how did that why is it that that one stuck i have no idea i have no that idea. particular word okay stuck 
okay yeah. way stuck. Everybody says okay in every language now. Yeah, yeah. You can say okay and you're you're done. You can communicate. But cool. I mean, there were lots of other words like 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 rad, rad, psychedelic, awesome, radical, tubular, tubular bro. Like I, I I lost slang around the early 2000s. For me, I remember filthy, sick, tight. And now there's other shit. I don't know. People are yeeting shit. I don't know what's going on these days. But but opera man, because people always say like, hey man, make opera cool. Our company's making opera cool. Opera's cool. And it's like, it's it's not. First off, right? Because I mean, like, it's not. You have to you have to just say that because it's not on MTV. It's not at the fucking Oscars. The opera Grammys have their own fucking thing. You know what I mean? It's and not it's high art. What kind of high art can be? Cool. You like it, and, and like for those of you getting all offended, you know, before you fucking start writing, before you're in, all butt hurt about which, this, which go ahead and write us in. I fucking down. dare you. Like, <laughs> but like the thing is, is like I think it's cool. I think it's cool in my personal vernacular of what that word means. I do think opera's no, cool. I don't think but, it's cool, but in terms of like everybody. Now I think it's, I think it's amazing. Mm-hmm. I think it's powerful. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. And I think there are cool individuals mm-hmm. maybe doing it, mm. right? Yeah. But there are, but opera itself is yeah. not necessarily cool. Well, then it's too. I'll tell you what it is. Yeah, you tell me. It's too. It's too rigid. Cool has something to do with sponta- like spontaneous. Yeah. Has something to do with like like that's why jazz is cool. Because they're getting up there and they're they're just fucking jamming, right? Yeah, but even from a public stance, I mean, like, like okay, like there's, there's so many ways to talk about it. Right? Like, what makes something fucking cool? But it's like opera. Sometimes I think about like sports. Like every time the Olympics come around, people are really into all these obscure sports. All of a sudden, pole vaulting. You know what I mean? Like fucking figure skating, and they watch it and they're like, God, that's fucking cool. But something about pole vaulting, something about this stuff, is not as accessible as baseball. Or football or basketball because we can all run, we can all throw, we can all catch, and so I think somehow when we look at football, we understand it more than pole vaulting is so. Yeah, that's a good point. If pole, pole vaulting, vaulting so were cool, de- yeah. If it were really cool, you'd be watching it on Sundays. Yeah, but pole vaulting Instead is so football. detached from from what we know that it's hard to understand it. And the parallel I'm making to opera is that pop music is often more uh, like. It has to do with everyday life. Like those sounds are more common for what you would hear. But opera, as soon as you hear an operatic tone, it's like that has nothing to do with anything you've ever heard before. And it's cool. Just like every four years, pole vaulting is fucking cool. But it's not as immediately accessible as that other shit. I think people are going to be surprised to hear us saying this. Yeah. Because I think or what people somehow look at us or or, 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 somehow see us is that we are trying to make opera cool, but that's way not what we're doing. No, dog. We're not trying to make fucking opera cool. Yeah. We're just trying to talk about it. Well, and If I, the way we talk about it is cool, that's different. Yeah, but you, but you know what the thing is, is I don't want to make opera cool. Because to make opera cool, they already did that. That's pop music. You know what I mean? You have it's to- musicals. Y- even beyond that, it's it's yeah. it's beyond that. It's it's like it's like high school musical, like yeah. the movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you have to dumb it down because the more the more esoteric. I know you hate that I use that word sometimes, but the more esoteric you make it, by definition, it's a smaller and smaller subset of the population. And if you want it to be cool, then by definition, it has to apply to many, many, many people in the world, which means. Either you have to educate the entire population or something like that, or like you have to change the basic society, society's perception of the arts, or you have to dumb it down to match them. So those are two different conversations to have. Do you bring society up to the level of opera? Okay, like how do you do that? Or do you bring opera down to the level of society, which is the obvious easier one, I think. I mean, it's, that's, that's all sound. Uh, and I was half listening to you and half thinking, man, how do you fucking define the word cool? Yeah. I know when things are cool and mm-hmm. not cool. But, but to cool. define it is really difficult. Yeah. Like I I mean there's cool to the yeah. In, uh, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I was just going to say there's cool to the individual and then there's cool in terms of like a a public opinion. Yeah, but I guess you can't you can't boil it down to populism. That can't be it. The definition of cool. Yeah. Yeah, I mean uh <laughs> fucking internet down here i'd look up the definition of cool but um man it's fucking crazy 
I would because well because people because that's what's hard about the word cool because I use the word cool to describe things I fucking like and there's things I like that are obscure obscure and it's like you don't know that movie man it's so fucking cool but I don't mean it's cool in terms of like everybody fucking likes it you know what I mean yeah it's like it's like that's what I think is cool so are you prepared to revise your statement are mm-hmm. there there are there operas that you think are cool. There's operas that I, as an individual, think are cool, but do I think that there are operas that, as the way society society exists now, could ap- could appeal to the masses? Like, no, not really. What about something like to um, the masses? You know what I mean? But that's what I said. You, I don't know. I, I I think it's I think it's hard to define it as just populism. Mm-hmm. I mean, if it's if it's populism, then you've got a real. I mean. Then okay, well then let's go back to what you were talking about jazz earlier. You because know? It, uh, jazz doesn't appeal to a lot of people, but it's clearly cool. Let's let's go away from objects for a second. Let's talk about people. Okay. You know what I mean, like just imagine you're in high school. There's cliques. There's different things. There's always like in every high school film. There's the nerd and there's the cool guy. Yeah. What makes that person the nerd and what makes that person cool? You know what I mean? I think someone cool is. Uh, I mean, cool is often a synonym for being like calm. You know yeah. what I mean? Not like losing your shit, not being like scared of a situation, not being like anxious about something, like being in control or something like that. Yeah. So I guess opera definitely has those qualities. Yeah, I, I uh, confidence. Con- yeah, confidence. Sure, confidence. Um, I think not to get too like uh, primal with it, but I think a lot of coolness also has to do with you're not like. Because I, I tell people all the time, if you if you talk to me a lot, every other conversation I'm, I have is going to be about the fact that people are still fucking animals. You know, right. we think we're so detached from animals, but we all are still Straight fucking up animals. We are we are one tiny apocalyptic event from like turning into fucking apes. You know, we're like one good solar flare away yes. from being without electricity. Like 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 the finance system goes up, and they're yep. like. No more money. <laughs> like it's not a thick wall. Nobody's separating got any us. gold anymore. No, it's it's just a thin little curtain, a wet fucking cheesecloth separating us from acting like animals. And so I think, like psychologically, you know, there's still all the shit when we talk about like mating and sexuality and wanting to like have a partner. But also when you see someone who is coordinated, you know what I mean? That's part of it. Yes, they're, they're like coordinated. sexuality, sexuality. But also we can make that point. But the point I'm making is that like if you're fumbling. I think and I think like like deep down like um evolutionarily speaking if you see someone who's a klutz it's like you're like that guy might make some noise in the woods and we're going to get eaten cuz of that fuck. Yeah, okay, I see what you're so saying. So being cool like like that's why like people like dance like you don't trip over yourself like being like you know what I mean like I think people So sexuality often, is the other side of that. So there's there's an evolutionary uh, evolutionary advantage mm. to somebody who's not going to be a fucking klutz, yeah, yeah. someone who's graceful somehow, right? Mm-hmm. But there's also an evolutionary advantage to fucking somebody beautiful. Yeah. I mean, people people want people think other people are attractive because or the the theory goes yeah. with evolutionary biologists that mm. that attractiveness is a sign of health. Yeah. Like symmetry is a sign of health yeah, yeah sure, you know sure, 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 sure. uh and uh perhaps that has something to do with cool i mean you see a cool person you you see a cool person mm. they're most likely probably pretty good looking yeah and confident mm. those are the two fucking things yeah, yeah confident also has to do with your thing about not being a fucking klutz yeah, yeah. do you know a confident klutz no, I mean, how could you be? <laughs> right, <laughs> that's kind of. I difficult. guess if you're just really, really <clears throat> ignorant, you could be very confident and a klutz. Yeah, I mean, it's such a difficult conversation to have, you know, because there are aspects of opera where it's like the costumes. Like, I don't care what the fucking piece is. If you have a good costume designer or set designer, you can immediately make it accessible and cool in that regard. Yeah, but you know people I mean? people are somehow people are somehow recognizing the dissonance between mm-hmm. making uh, like making music which doesn't necessarily today ring as cool mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and then having somebody try to make it cool by outside features like the costumes or the set yeah. right mm-hmm. so if you're listening to mozart right mm-hmm. i wouldn't say mozart's cool yeah i wouldn't say it's cool even if you put people on in like fucking uh Gucci <clears throat> clothes or something up <clears throat> on stage, right? And they look goddamn fabulous. Right. They might be cool, mm-hmm. but the opera necessarily wasn't cool. No, no, no. I know what you mean. We're I gonna know. get some hate mail for this. I eh, think. Fuck it, bring it on. We're just having a conversation. It's fucking allowed, all right? We're not fucking doing anything. But you know what I mean? Because because the thing about pop music is it's like 
music in general, it's very mathematical, right? And what makes music enjoyable or not is this balance of like predicted, like like how like how accurate are my predictions? Like my mind, you know? Yeah. Like when are they satisfied? And when you go against my predictions, like is it a way that makes sense? I can understand. And how different is it? Because our brains are super analytical, and we're always calculating and observing, right. and that's why music is so universal because it taps into what it feeds what the brain wants, which right. is to learn to calculate to predict. That's just what we do. We can't stop that. And pop music often is like 4-4. Four, four. There's a beat. There's It's like eighth notes, quarter notes, dotted stuff. It's not... It, when it's different, it's not crazy fucking different. So it's immediately accessible, like a fucking McDonald's cheeseburger. Yeah. It doesn't have fucking depth like French food fucking does or like opera does. And you, we, could, we could have the conversation about opera. We could also have it about pole vault. And we'd also talk about like gourmet French fucking cuisine. It's like it's not... You can't have a fast food chain of gourmet French cuisine because it's like you, people don't have the fucking time or energy or intelligence to dive that deep. Name into a f- it. name a cool food. A cool food? Is there such a thing as a cool food? Something slice of pizza, say? fucking Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, dude. All right. Okay. <laughs> you know, like if you see someone at a party, like they're gonna have a cheeseburger, a pizza, or a hot dog. But if like if you had I a- wouldn't say a cheeseburger's cool though. I guess, but if you had like a film with like a frat party and a guy, had like I can't even tell you a fancy fucking food right now because I can't even think of it. What's like, a fancy food? Like man? eating a, a eating caviar. Yeah, caviar like, is not fucking cool. Like slurping oysters or some shit like right. that. It's like, yeah, it's not cool, man. I don't know. I don't know, but um, because cool, cool is something to the individual, but it's like it's also a marketing term because people don't like it. Because sometimes if you like say like, you know, like, hey. This is fucking cool. Sometimes you sound like like the fifty five year old dad trying to watch MTV with his like thirteen year old kids. This is you know what, what the mean? kids are saying nowadays. Cool. Like dude. South Park does this episode where they're playing Guitar Hero and his oh, yeah. dad pulls out a real guitar and he's like, I could teach you guys to play these songs for real. And it's like, that's not the point. Like that's not it's not the point of this. You right. know what I mean? And it's like you said about the Mozart thing. Like maybe Mozart is like I wouldn't call the magic flute cool. Might but, have been back but in the it day. Is, we don't it, know. But it is moving. It's it is captivating, you know. What I mean, right. it is other things that that uh, uh, appeal to people now, apply to people now. And from a marketing standpoint, if I owned an opera company and I was trying to put out fucking bohem, you know, or whatever, I don't know if I would market the coolness of it or the coolness of the singers because that's not what it's about. And come on, it's not it's not a rock you're concert. Just, yeah, you're just fucking lying to yourself and to other people if if you're saying come here, it's cool. No. This shit is really, it's actually really high elevated art, you know? But it is, but it is a lot of things. And let's focus on those, you know what I mean? If we were marketing. Yeah, that's what I mean. I mean, you can can convince people to fucking do it. And that's why, I mean, or to go after it. And that's, I think, if I were to come up with an MO for us is we're just talking about things in an, we're talking about this seemingly inaccessible art in an accessible way, Mm -hmm. you know? Mm Mm-hmm. And people would often say the way we t- we've gotten people to write us that they think the way that what we're doing is cool, and what yeah. they mean is the way we're talking mm. is cool. The way we're talking about it is somehow fresh yeah, yeah. to them. You know, I mean, I saw things where it's like, like we talked like on season one about this. I, I saw this opera that that John Brancy did in Frankfurt, where they used all the green screens. It was like a movie and stuff oh, like yeah. that. And I think if you got a normal fucking person in there, they would see that and they might describe it as they might describe it as a lot of things. And they might use the word cool, but it's like, I don't know. I don't know. Cool is like to me is like you go to university the next day and you like you fucking brag about it that you did it or something like that. You know what yeah. I mean? And I don't know if it's that. And and maybe it can be that. But it's like musicals can be cool. Musicals can be cool. You go in there and they can use the right kind of flashing and dancing and whatever yeah, yeah. to make it cool. But people have these other elements in them. You know what I mean? Like like Les Mis was a movie that came out in the theaters and I feel like it was pretty popular. Like people saw it. Yeah. And there's our like the Joker, I saw the Joker recently. I saw it three fucking times in the theater. I love that movie. People would call that movie cool, but it was definitely like I don't want to use the word esoteric again, but it was like, you know what I mean? It wasn't like mainstream fucking shit. Yeah, well that's that's really, really the big art. If you can if you can make it very accessible mm-hmm. and and really high art at the same time. Right. I think that was Verdi's thing because Verdi, you know, like, yeah, Verdi was arguably the highest point in opera. Yeah. 
like the high watermark in opera. Mm. But his tunes were known everywhere. Yeah. By normal people. Mm. And that's there's something about that that it's that it's an actual legitimate aria mm. in a legitimate thing, but people are going around whistling it in the streets. Well, like we talked, I think it was in this season, maybe. No, it was the, we, this episode two or three. What three. is this? Three. I mean, it was the other season we talked about last season where we talked about this crumping thing. And the thing oh, yeah. is, is but but the Baroque opera itself is not what made that cool. It was the crumping which already exists. In combination with it, the thing they got really good with that, yeah, and I think I tweeted it. Go check out the, go check out Twitter. I'm pretty sure mm. I tweeted it, right? Uh, the thing they got, they were able to find out what the commonality was between, or uh, yeah, between normal crumping, the yeah. music that they would use for that, mm. and the music of Rameau, right? Yeah. Mm. Like the, this, this percussiveness and the falling on the beat, like yeah, that, yeah. was was so similar that it was able to map one to one. Yeah, yeah, sure. And sure, then sure. they were able to make the uh music even cooler. Actually, for me, for my taste, if you're going to get cool music, it, some of that French baroque mm. where they'll use the drums. Yeah, yeah. And it's so percussive and moving forward, mm. that's some of the coolest music. Yeah. If I'm going to say cool about it, I'd say that's some of the coolest music. Well, and it's hard because people People have like these two conversations at the same time. They're like, I want opera to be fucking cool. Then it's like, well, then can we put some microphones up there and can we get some electric guitars going on? No! They're like, fuck no. And it's like, well, then what the fuck do you want? Like, it's like, it doesn't have to be. You can sell it as something else, but don't try to package it to these 16 year olds as cool. They know what cool is. You know what I mean? Like, they're being bummed. Barded with cool. Yes. They, they know what that is. But if you sell them something else, you know what I mean? Yeah. What it actually is. That, you know, use the word elegance if you want to sell that angle. Use captivating. Use whatever it is. The thing that's like, yes, that is inarguably intense. Deep, deep. That was deep. Yeah. That was that was touching. That was moving. Because like, if you're trying... It if, is those things. It is. It is all of those things. And if you're trying to get into the, the cool market, mm. it's flooded. It's flooded. It's flooded with music that is specifically designed yeah. to touch all the cool nerves of the peop- exactly the people that you're trying to uh, get to. <laughs> well, in the cool market, like you, we talked about earlier, confidence is cool. Confidence in who you are. And opera just needs to be who it is. It doesn't need to be someone else. And also, the market, the coolness market of the internet is fucking flooded with these fake fucking YouTubers and people trying to fucking be somebody they're not. You know yep. what I mean? Like the 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 online image of these opera companies shouldn't try to to trick people into seeing it. You know, I just just show it for what it fucking is. Absolutely, it's which means saying, which man. means which means if there are, there might be cool elements to opera, yeah. which means you focus on those. The cool elements to opera. Excuse me, I had to burp. Are the universalities? Yeah. Okay. I mean, look, there are all kinds of operas that you can go out and fucking see that have like every. Like every fucking emotion that you want, right? Mm, yeah. Actually, it's not a bad segue. If you want to go fucking see an opera, yeah, there's a good way to do it, dude. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll, 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 let's talk it up. So, um, we talked about uh, a little bit on the first episode about um <clears throat> an app that we uh we actually have been uh, using ourselves, but actually we also met uh personally with the creator of this app. This is Opera Radar, um. And you can download Opera Radar from the Play Store. It's O P E and then Radar A R A D A R Opera Radar. And once you're in Opera Radar, you can just there's a search function. You can find out what operas are near you. If you're visiting a city, if you want to find a specific opera, if you want to do what know what a company's doing, you do it. And it's just basic. The whole point of this Opera Radar app is that it's click click and you're there. Um, and if you're if you already know which opera you want to see, there are so many ways of supporting the arts that cost you nothing. People always people write us all the time and they say, "Hey, I would love to support you guys, but I'm broke as fuck." And I always say, "That's fantastic. That's great. Why don't you go give us a five star review or something like that?" The way you can help the creator of this app is if you are going to book a hotel or if you're going to book a uh, tickets to a show, go through the app. Click tickets. It will reroute you to the place you were going to buy tickets anyway. But then that is how the maker of this app might earn a little bit to keep the app alive. That's right. So that's right. And you might. And it's and that's a way of supporting anymore. the arts. So if you really are serious about supporting the arts, start thinking about these. And this is kind of segue into a different thing. But start thinking about these 
uh, clever ways of doing it that cost you nothing. That costs you fucking nothing. If you enjoy our podcast or you enjoy the the Met Op or whatever and you can't give them money, go give them a good review on their web page or like this person, go through Opera Radar and buy your tickets to the show you're going to see anyway. It's not going to cost you any extra money and you just help somebody out in the arts. Absolutely. Be creative. Man, let's all let's all help each other. That's cool, dude. Helping each other's fucking cool. That is cool. We can all agree that, man. We learned that at a young age that helping each other's fucking cool. Mike, what you what you got over there, buddy? You, you want another? You want to do? Home? So we we can do round two of our. Uh, so last week we did the ale of arrows. From, oh yeah, that one got that one. That one. That one got us feisty. That man. hurt you. That hurt you. That I was ten percent. That was like the uh, that was like the the pink goo from uh, Ghostbusters two. Yeah. It made us a little aggressive. Yeah. Aggressive. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but that was from Butler Brew Works, mm. um, and that was uh, the Tits of Arrows. That tits. was that was Titties of Arrows. Nice, nice, nice. Um, this one is also from Butler Brew Works, and then when I was there, I had this. Mm. This is one of the most interesting beers I've ever tasted, ever smelled. Yeah, it's called Salvaged Vessel. I like yeah. this. They got this wax on the top. It looks it's, like it's like melting down the yeah, side. That's right. That's right. They dip that's it cool. in like Maker's Mark. It looks like a gold, like the gold wax. I on, am. Uh, ma- the red uh, one on Maker's yeah, Mark. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But this one's gold. Uh, this is barley wine st- style air ale, aged in bourbon barrels. Bourbon. Bourbon. Okay. Okay. Oh man, I gotta get this wax off. I hope we can open this one. I got it. Got There's, it. I like when it's like a when it's like a fucking potion bottle when you open it. Look, while Mike's pouring this beer, I'm just gonna say. Yeah. See. Uh, like. I'm not like I hope you listeners understand the point of what we just talked about in that I love opera. If I didn't love opera, I wouldn't make a whole goddamn fucking podcast about it, okay? But the thing I'm saying is don't sell yourself short when you're trying to talk about something or you're trying to do outreach. Don't just say, let's make opera cool. Cool, like we talked about, like is is an amassment of different things. And define the aspects of opera that actually reach people there are aspects of opera that are universal but the word cool is usually used for simple fucking bullshit plus if you're gonna say cool yeah and it has a colloquial meaning and somebody gets there and they don't find it cool you're fucked yeah you lied yeah because because I mean, we talk all, the, we, all we talk all the time on the podcast about like a word means something to me and it doesn't mean it to you you know what i mean so if you're gonna bring them into a new experience you might as well engage them with a new fucking word all right give me that beer man it looks fucking I'll delicious tell you, i'll tell you what's fucking cool is this beer yeah. Now give it a smell. All right, all right. Give it a smell. Woo! That smells like whiskey. Right? It smells straight like whiskey. How strong is this? What is this here? Eleven percent, dude. We're taking a step up. Okay. This smells like straight up whiskey, Mike. This looks like a I huge... always said it smelled like port. This is beer, right? Yeah, it's beer. This is called the what? It's eleven percent, you said? Yeah. Oh fuck. What is this? Salvaged vessel. Salvaged vessel. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think it smells like port. Well, that's that's wild. That's a trip. Did you try it? Yeah, that's like it's like a whiskey right at the beginning, and then it's like porter at the end. Yeah, exactly. It's it it tastes. That's wild. It, it tastes like all the it's got all the good bits of whiskey. Yeah, it's like a whiskey hit, and then like a porter chaser. That's right. I mean, I I really I really 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 like this one because it is just it is just absolutely all the best things about drinking bourbon. Without all the things that you regret the next day, you know. <laughs> I think in Philadelphia, I was in Philadelphia once, and there was a bar called the Boilermaker. You know what a Boilermaker is? It's yeah, like, sure. And uh, th- the whole menu was just whiskeys paired with beers. Nice. That was fucking awesome, man. I, I think I've said this on the podcast before, but my fucking dream was and still is that I want to someday get a drink named after me. You know, I'll have a Tom Collins. I want a fucking Jared Ice. And I, I, uh, I did my undergraduate in this really small town. And I went to the bars, and I would order a drink. I bet, can I get the Jared Ice? And they're like, what is that? And I'm like, it's a shot of, and I did it also for our thing, our Papaganos. It was a red wine with a shot of whiskey in it. Okay. Do you remember that? Yeah, for Papaganos? The, the Medusa, what was it called? Man, the Papaganos, I remember this. It was, it was, we made a video way back in our Instagram feed. You could find it. It was like, I made you a drink, and it was, I think, Red Bull, red wine, and a shot of whiskey. And what was mine again? Oh, yours. You made a. Uh, it was like a rusty nail, with like with like with. Uh, oh, so a uh, with a um ah yeah. With um, what is that called? An otter pop. <laughs> no, um, uh, freeze pop or something like that. What's it called? Vasa ice. ice yeah. yeah, I don't know what that is in English anymore. It's like an otter pop Shit. where I'm from. Um, 
And then sprinkles. You put some sprinkles in there. That's right. But the names of the drinks, I can't remember what they like were called. Like mine was called like Papageno's. Mine Snack was the snake that, like the, that. Sni- the snake, the snake that bit that me. Bit you. The snake that bit me, and yours was the um, uh, Papageinsaft. Papageinsaft. <laughs> right. <laughs> so good days, man. Anyway, Papageinsaft. listen. This beer is really intriguing. Like yeah. really, really good. Butlerbrewworks.com. Go oh. check them out. Ooh. If you're in the Pittsburgh area, definitely worth the trip up the, there. Their their kitchen's also amazing. Man, we're going to take our shirts off and wrestle after this podcast, dude. This shit's going to get us going. Ever. We'll do it. <laughs> um, also, yeah, sorry. I, I kind of I kind of jumped ship there. But the Opera Radar, please, please go check out that app. Like I said, it's free to download. It's like it, he, it, we, I, I was telling him while you were getting the beer that we met with the um, creator of the app. And he said he wants to keep it simple like Google. It's, about, it's all about being intuitive. Click, click. Do it. Okay. And go support him because if you're going to buy the tickets anyway, then you might as well buy it through there. Yeah. Why, why not? Why the fuck not? I mean, it's a free way to fucking support the arts. You got to get creative in today's world. Absolutely. Shit. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I don't know, man. This outreach stuff. It's like I, I haven't done. Have you done a lot of outreach? Uh, no, only for. Um, I've done some. Yeah. Okay. Then you go because I, all, all I've done are children's operas. Yeah, I've done a lot of those. The 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 children's operas for sure. Uh in South Carolina there was a couple companies that like really went around and did this. But most of the outreach I've seen is um yeah, like uh like people just doing like operas for kids and like they change some of the words to make it a bit more silly. You know, so the magic flute's about a fucking like hot dog or something like that. Uh which outreach for kids, for kids for for fucking kid kid kids, like 5, 6, 7 years old, I think that's the way to do it. What else could you do? Silly costumes, and you get them used to the idea of going to the opera. That's fine, but outreach to 16-year-olds. Man, <laughs> you've done some good shit there. What? You did the... Uh, oh, my God. I don't know if you want to talk about that, but you, you've had some good experiences. Nah, I, I don't want to talk about it, but there, there have been some, there's some, been some decent experiences. The, but I'm not actually sure. Let me play the devil's advocate here. Please do, Michael Pegger. Which, which is, that's normally my role. Yeah. the devil's advocate. And I'm the devil. And, and you're the devil. Um, <laughs> you say the Diablo. What, uh, what was I going to say? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here it is. Okay. I'm not sure if it is the best strategy to go after li- young kids. You know why? In outreach, in outreach. You know why? Yeah. Young kids don't buy opera tickets. Yeah, and it's like, yeah, yes, of course, but also it's like- They don't have any fucking money, dude. And it's like, it also is the, is the concept then that you're going to sing for these six-year-olds and then that experience is going to carry them over their teen years into their 20s? I guess so. I mean, that is a valid way, but you got to put almost all of your time and resources into the people who can give you money. I'm sorry, who are going to support the arts then. There Everybody are... talks about how the kids are our future. The kids don't fucking vote, you know? Yeah. The, the, we need we need people who can vote now. You want to talk you can talk about educating kids mm-hmm. all you want, mm-hmm. but you got to get out there and get these people who are deciding what the future is yes and if anybody out there is doing uh outreach for for like 15 16 17 year olds and you're having success at it i would like you to write us and tell us because there must be people doing stuff that works and more people should know about it i was up north when i was doing that beer opera up in uh, birmingham right birmingham birmingham picky fucking blinders man i was up in birmingham and uh with infant opera company and they were telling me a bit about some of the outreach they did, and um, it was a short conversation, so I wish uh, we would have talked more about it, but I was on my way to the airport, I think. But they, they had like this whole like like create the meme thing. Like they would kind of discuss the story and people would like kind of like create a meme and like try to compete in that way, like stuff like that. Okay. Um, and they were involved in writing it. So they had some interesting ideas that I hadn't heard of for that age group, you know, to try to to try to speak their language a bit. So anyway, the point is is if you're out there and you got something that, that you're doing, uh, let us know. I would like to know. I'm curious. I mean, I can't imagine a better thing than to just make something that is enjoyable for a kid. Mm -hmm. You know? Well, I mean, you and I with these mini operas we make, we are not doing it for outreach, but... uh, They are enjoyable. But we're we're, we're making them in a way where I hope some 16-year-old would think it's fucking funny. You know? Or something like that if we went and did it for them. That type of shit. Hey. Totally. Totally. Hey. Um, Oh, there was something else I wanted to say about that, but it's fucking gone, Mike. It's gone. Gone forever. It's the it's the salvage vessel. The salvage vessel do. hit me like a ton of bricks, man. Dude, it's so interesting smelling too. It really is. I want a candle made out of this shit. Oh, I just dipped my nose in. I just went nose deep. Oh my fucking god. Um, yeah, no, I haven't done that much outreach. Unfortunately. 
and forge. Nah, you know, uh, though, uh, I got to say, I'm kind of glad I haven't done that much outreach because yeah. those shows are at 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock in the morning. That's true. Almost always. I was saying, when I was in Hamburg, uh, the Hamburger Kama Opa, which is one of the first gigs I did in Germany, uh, they do an evening show, which is something like like Verdi or Puccini or something. But then during the day, they do a uh, kids opera. It's like I think it's the biggest or one of the biggest daily like children's operas in all of Germany. And every day, almost every day, five days a week, they'd have a busload of kids, 100, 200 kids come to this theater and watch a show. And these buses would travel from all over to see this shit. And these people worked hard. And they were singing at like... Uh, yeah, like 10 in the morning. But you're singing like the Duke. You know, you're singing about cheeseburgers and schnitzel, but it's like, it's still the fucking like O Cuesta Cuela or whatever, right. like hard shit, you know? Like, like I don't wanna... the, the baritone was singing like the Largo, you know? Like it was about funny stuff. Like they put it in German with funny lyrics. A G is a G, man. It doesn't matter, a how, a G. It doesn't matter how funny it fucking is. But a G is not a G at 9.30 in the morning. No, no. No way. No, fuck that shit. Dress like a fucking like lion or some shit. Yeah, like that. I don't. I, I. I mean, like I said, I. I want to do. I. I want young people to go. Uh, I kind of want them to go on my terms. <laughs> Not on their terms. <laughs> get it. Get your parents to let you stay out a little longer and come hear me. Later but just, uh, just to wrap up, kind of what we talked about. I think also, and we talked about this in, in a side project we did recently that wasn't the podcast. But I think also part of the opera experience people don't focus enough on is the uh, just the atmosphere. The music's cool. You know, you do Tosca, you put it in cool costumes, some candlelight, red dress. The music's cool. You get the super titles so they can understand. But I think a lot of people that are 20, 21 years old are uh, intimidated by just the the atmosphere. The big opera house. The big a opera bunch house. bunch of old, white-haired people A bunch of old suits, fucking people. And I know the Met has like all the time. a 30s thing where it's like 30s and under or like only people in their 30s. They have these nights where everyone there is like fucking young. So I know that there's stuff. I know that there's stuff that people do, but uh, you talk about making the opera cool. Like before, it's like the stage or the advertisements and stuff. Have you ever seen people trying to make the actual experience itself like fucking cool? Only at musicals. Yeah, but I mean, like I, opera is like one of the things that opera does is have this like pompousness, right? Yeah, yeah. Normally, yeah. And uh, it's one of the things that we could do without, perhaps. Well, I think we've talked about on the podcast before in Pittsburgh. Actually, we did. I did these like mini operas. They were like 10, 15 minutes long, yeah. and uh, we would do a cabaret, get everyone liquored up, and we'd go in this like four side like black box, and we would do these like ten minute, ten minute, ten minute pieces that were like dirty and adult themed and shit like that. People were drunk. We'd do them at midnight, and mm. uh, they crushed, they killed. See, that's nice. You know what I mean? Where I, people are able to drink during it. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Yeah, people were able to drink during it. They I'm drank in before, it. and and I would love to do something like that. With you. All right. But, um, so anyway, my point is, is people, look, Mike and I are just trying to have a discussion about this, but if you know some fucking, like, cool outreach shit, some cool opera shit, let us fucking know. Let us know. All right? It. We'll share it with the goddamn world. We'll get it out there. Anything else you want to say to the lovely fucking people today, Mike and Pegger? I think that's it. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, barrel into this salvage vessel. Mike and I are going to chug these beers. We're going to butter up and we're going to, we're going to, we're going to see who can hogtie who. See you in two weeks. Have fun, people.